I think I spoke about this previously. Um, John Summit got, got into a bit of bother online with um, Rebecca Black fans and I think maybe by extension Boiler Room fans and maybe by default Charlie, XX, Charlie XCX fans because he had a very direct conversation about Boiler Room maybe being over because Rebecca Black was doing a performance there. John Summit got on social media and said that Boiler Room is finished because they decided to book Rebecca Black to perform and she was playing a remix of her Friday song that was I think remix of some Charlie XCX song or something like that. And uh, obviously you got a lot of pushback online because a lot of people, myself included, think, you know, John Summit's pretty lame. So him having an opinion on anything cool is never going to resonate. But he did actually reply to some of the controversy, some of the pushback he got online about it via an episode of How Long Gone, episode number 696. He replies to some of the backlash he got regarding his comment of Rebecca Black being on Boiler Room. And I'm not going to lie, John Summit's response has made me like him now. I was never the biggest John Summit fan. But I have to be honest, now hearing his reply and hearing how self-aware he is, I actually like the guy now. So this is John Summit replying back to some of the, you know, criticism he got regarding Rebecca Black being on Boiler Room. Um, I <laughs> wanted to talk about Boiler Room. You had a little boily time on Twitter yep. in the last few days. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about it on the podcast a couple of days ago when we, when we were planning to have you on about, um, so Rebecca Black, who sings Friday. Yep. Um, she did a boiler room set and you sort of said, you know, is this the end of boiler room? Yeah. <laughs> which, I, I, which sparked some controversy or maybe I'm, I'm, you didn't exactly say those words. No, I said boiler room is dead. And, and it, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I did. I was actually more direct than that. Yeah. I think that was more... <laughs> and like, I like really pissed people off and I'm like confused. Like why they're so mad. I didn't realize that she had like a legit, like, army stan of a fan base mm -hmm. honestly i got a little humbled there because then i went in <laughs> went in her discography and didn't realize how big she was in the uh the hyper pop scene <laughs> and what she's been doing mm -hmm. but becca got slaps is what you learned <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> but what really what i meant though is that like in my head what a boy room kind of event style was is like kind of like a more Bergine, like underground ravey, like mm -hmm. phones down, everyone in the moment raving. And then I open up Twitter and I watch this video and I hear Friday, Friday, gotta get. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck kind of rave is this? Which is obviously his first mistake, right? Because Boiler Room has never been an underground thing, apart from maybe the short time when it was kind of invented during its inception. But again, he wasn't there right there wasn't many of us that was i was i'm sure there's a few of you out there who probably were as well but when boiler room sort of like first started it was legitimately in a boiler room they were filming it on the webcam and it was i think it might have been the old like peanut factory in like what, what would you call that place i think you'd call it like is it is that homerton i'm not sure if it's homerton or if that's like a haggerson area but whatever that area is that you know what i'm talking about the peanut factory in hackney um, that was where most of the, all the earlier boiler rooms were. So that was maybe the only time it was kind of underground when that sort of time happened. But the moment they started to collaborate and sort of have brand partners like Ray-Ban and this liquor company and this fucking energy drink company, the underground aspects of, of boiler room kind of disappeared. If anything, maybe the optics and the sort of like uh, presentation of it maybe lend itself to the underground thing because they usually have them in these kind of like really huge warehousey type of places or whatever open spaces but i don't think the actual operation of itself has been underground maybe maybe for many a year maybe more for more than a decade it's not been underground it's just never been the case and uh <laughs> and so yeah and so, so i immediately talk shit and then of course they talk yeah. shit right back at me and uh and you know, like, and I'm a shit talker, and I and I, and I can take it as much as I can dish it. So, uh, okay, every, good. Everything they dished back, I totally understood. Yeah, sure. It's <laughs> props to him for saying that, by the way. Props to him for saying that. It's fair. I mean, I I'm terrified of Stan culture, and I feel like she's like a low level of that. But you don't want to tangle. You don't want to go a step above that. It could ruin your weekend. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause like <laughs> I said that tweet and I put my phone down and I went, went back on my phone a few hours later. I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah like, sure. This took a turn. Uh, yeah. You oh got blacked. God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, some of the, some of the, I, I was, I was reading through the comments and a lot of people were saying, you know, this is something that people might agree with you on that it, you know, the, the, and I agree with you, the vision I have in my mind of boiler room, 
for the heads only dark room everyone's having a crazy deep rave yes djs are playing their most epic special set that represents them as a person for the whole world to see it's proper dj culture yep and now you got friday friday and it's all fucked up but people were often talking about how you if you ever dj a boiler room that would also mean the end or the death of boiler room <laughs> mainly just based on how you look I, i'm assuming big up to fucking tj for asking that question by the way because that was the main point of contention online it wasn't that john summit didn't have a point partially that rebecca black playing this hyper pop remix of friday on boiler room was an example of it being over but it was more so it was wrong messenger right message wrong messenger because obviously most of us with ears and with taste would say john summit makes terrible music and he's not the best dj and probably has one of the most punchable faces in the world but one of the best things about him and something that really separates him from his peers is where he answers this question because it shows a level of self-awareness and a level of humility that most people who are less famous than him don't even have because he objectively doesn't make good music i don't think so but he's still super popular and very you know well off and well loved by his fans so he can let his nuts hang he can he can afford to be a bit of a cunt but he's not and he's self-aware enough to say this as a reply this is why i like the guy i was never insinuating that i'm playing a boy room either because i have no intention of playing a boy room sure yeah. so like <laughs> that's not your shit either you don't you i'm you're good yeah, i i would i like to attend those things i'm a huge fan of underground rave culture and uh, that's where i started from that's where i came from and then like I, I am not an idiot. I know my music is <laughs> is mm. commercial. It's mainstream. I have a Vegas residency. You know, I'm not like yeah. You don't have to find me in a some sketchy alley to find a John Summit show. But um, sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm still a fan of that scene and culture. That's why I like the guy. That's why I like the guy. That ability to say, look, I understand I'm the wrong messenger, but my message still stands. I'm still standing ten toes down on what I said booking someone like Rebecca Black to play that type of music on that sort of platform is devaluing what that platform's about and not maybe upholding the traditions of underground rave culture stuff, which I don't think is right because I feel like, but maybe he's right in his own way because I feel like Americans view on like dance music and underground rave culture is completely different to what we have here in Europe. So maybe his view of what Boiler Room is and his way of thinking about it is maybe somewhat right because maybe the way he sees underground rave culture in North America is completely different to how we kind of were up, brought up with it here in the UK and Europe beyond. But I would definitely say, you know, without, you know, cutting any corners that most likely most people in Europe wouldn't really see Boiler Room as a representation of underground rave culture. If anything, Boiler Room is maybe a platform that gets you closer to the mainstream. It may, it might, it may, may, now it's fully mainstream, but I feel like in the past, it was one of those kind of stepping stones you need to get on in order for you to become a mainstream act. Maybe for you to come to get like big bookings. Because so there's no, you know, there's many stories out there. I think Jada G is one of the biggest ones where her set on Boiler Room was one of the reasons why she became like a global fucking DJ and shit. It's a great platform to kind of, you know, showcase your skills out there to the world. So to see it or to view it or judge it as an underground thing is really dumb, especially when you consider it's been sold. I think it got sold to Dice or something for millions. They have brand partners coming all out the world. They have offices all around the world. They have activations and events all around the world. Like, I think that kind of, you know, disqualifies you from being underground. But I still understand where he's coming from. Um, if anything, I feel like Boiler Room is doing a really good job now of maybe balancing the two of doing a good job of kind of like platforming and showcasing quote unquote underground people and underground collectives and shit and place them up on the platform and also giving the ability of like really big names to get on their platform too. And and maybe it becomes, maybe it's a clarity because I would hope that now the pay has been sorted out. Cause I feel like that was some of the main reason why a lot of people were having a lot of bad feelings, a lot of bad things to say about Boiler Room because of the lack of pay. Because I think earlier on, people kind of found out that they were getting loads of like government, government subsidies, government grants and shit. But a lot of the DJs that are playing on there were never getting paid. Um, I personally think there needs to be a platform in the arts, especially a platform like a boiler room, where pay is not the be on end all. There has to be platforms that exist that are just for the love. And I feel like if you want a play, if you want a platform like Boiler Room to exist, but you don't want it to be so heavily reliant on brands and sponsorships and shit and whatever and horrible or maybe or maybe um sponsors and partners that you maybe don't agree with morally politically and shit 
you have to be able to support these platforms and give them the ability whoops give them the option not to pay djs because not everything should be a payment there should be some platforms that you do or some things that you do as an artist just for the love just for the quote-unquote aspects of giving back um but boiler Room probably never stated that and maybe they're making way too much money in the beginning and they really went out their way not to pay people just to kind of not to pay people but i feel like maybe nowadays it's been probably cleared up because of the change owners and shit maybe they've kind of cleared it up and got it correct and now it's like okay we pay people here's what we pay here's our set rate and they can kind of go forward that way and make it kind of easy because then that then allows them to kind of go forward and maybe have a bit more of an interesting booking policy and shit and become a little bit more kind of well-rounded in that regard but i feel like they've done a really good job and of course they've kind of capitalized as well now on the fact that platforms like horror and stuff have kind of fallen by the wayside i feel like they've definitely benefited highly from that now who have kind of suffered from you know being cancelled because of the whole like israel gaza thing going on and people finding out that they may be you know a little bit more sympathetic to, to the israel government than they would like that's kind of a affected whore negatively and now i think boy room is the last platform standing basically in terms of dj live streams and people are now kind of you know um drawing to them a little bit more but i don't think rebecca black is the end of boy room i feel like if you're not a fan of boy room you're not going to be a fan of boy room for years prior to rebecca black i don't think she's the reason why you're not listening to it anymore you probably got way more other reasons to not listen to them anymore um but you know it kind of is what it is but big up john summit anyway for being self-aware and being up to John Summit for having a good sense of humor and for understanding why some of the people like myself didn't really take what he said about Boiler Room um, seriously or kind of looked at him or kind of judged him for what he said based on how he represents as an artist. And he was able to see past that and understand it, but still stand turn tones down his opinion and say, hey, I know I'm not the right person to say this, but I'm still going to say this. So big up John Summit, big up John Summit, impossible to hate, impossible to hate.